I am just watching regist uh, registrants roll on in. We just passed 50 participants. You do not need cameras, no. Hi, Susan. I don't know if you've missed uh, one of these yet. Good to see you back. Oh, 73. See if 75 people will be here today. 74. Wow, 76 people. Okay, so welcome to today's webinar. It's part of the Level Up series brought to you by the Digital Economy Program. I will explain more about the program shortly and let you know how your business can benefit. But before we start, I will acknowledge that we in the province of Alberta, we are situated on the traditional territories of treaties four, six, seven, eight, and 10 ancestral homeland of diverse First Nations groups, Métis, and Indigenous people whose ancestors have walked this land since time immemorial, and whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our broad, vibrant community. We pay respects to the Indigenous people of this land, past, present, and future, while recognizing their cultural heritage, beliefs, and relationship to the land on which we reside. It is Awesome to see so many people join us for the event. Today, we're going to be talking about social success. And before I introduce Kelly, you can see smiling at us, I'll just give you some more information on the Digital Economy Program. I don't want you to miss out on any of the benefits of this program. It is funded by the Government of Alberta and is a partnership between Business Link and our friends at Digital Main Street. There are two streams of support you can access here. Shop Here, powered by Google, will help you establish or upgrade your e-commerce website. And the Digital Service Squads, which are teams of digital specialists located all the way across the province, are there to help you see any gaps you might have and work with you to help improve your business's online presence. So whether that's getting on Instagram or starting up your first website, anywhere in between, they're there to help. You can learn more about the program and apply to take part at dep.businesslink.ca. That brings us to the headline act of today's webinar. Kelly Duty is the founder of Social School and is presenting on 12 marketing topics as a part of this series. We are really pleased to have Kelly partner with us. And I know we have both enjoyed the questions and interactions we've had in the series up to now. And I'm sorry that it is me, Rebecca Calder, and not your usual match, um, but I will try and get close to the shoes. I don't know if I can fill them. Uh, so please use the Q&A section to add your questions and feel free to add comments to the chat if you have anything to share with the group. A recording of today's session and materials will be um, emailed along to you and you can also access everything now on the Business Link website at businesslink.ca slash DEP um, dash webinars. We will, don't worry, we're gonna paste that into the chat right away. All right, I am going to pop myself on mute until I have some insight and I will let Carrie, um, Kelly take it from here. Thanks, Rebecca. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the, uh, well, let's call it episode six, workshop, workshop number six in this 12 part series. Oh my gosh, it's like we have our own little nerdy micro series, the binge worthy kind, probably not actually, but we'll pretend it's binge worthy. Um, so nice to be with you all. Uh, as Rebecca said, my name is Kelly. I'm located in Calgary. And uh, I see plenty of Edmontonians, even some North Vancouverites. And uh, it's just, this is the highlight, as I've said a few times before, of any of the work I'm doing right now or that our team is doing because, um, well, just the, the breadth of, of businesses that you represent. And, uh, and then I guess just because it's so close to our heart. Uh, at Social School, we've worked with entrepreneurs 
for ages, over a decade in fact, and uh, our entire goal is to help you better tell your story and just you know leverage today's digital tools and storytelling platforms that are at our fingertips and that are designed to help us grow our businesses. Does, is social media perfect? No. Is it, you know, challenging on a personal level and on a business level and all the rest of it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but we're going to focus on what makes it, it fantastic for getting the word out, sharing our product services expertise, you know, growing our movement, building our fans and followers, and just generally reaching our goals, not just from a marketing standpoint, but revenue and, you know, repeat customers and, and just overall success in business. So, so glad you're all here and uh, we're going to dive right in. Uh, before we begin, I do have to apologize because I didn't want to change the outline that we promised you, which was these three bullet points. So if you did sign up and read what the, the outline was going to be today, I've, I'm pulling a fast one on you because we're not going to talk a lot about pay to play today. And the reason is that we have two upcoming workshops in this series that go deep into selling on social. Uh, it's called social selling and I believe it's workshop number nine. And then we also have digital advertising. So we're going to be talking so much about paid social and ad campaigns coming up. And the more I dug into this week's materials, I really wanted us to dive into the features of the key platforms today. So the organic reach that's available to us and the untapped opportunities. So before we go throwing money at the problem and paying to get our social content seen, I really want to focus on the organic or unpaid opportunities that so many of us are not yet tapping into. So what we're really focusing on today is a platform overview. I will talk about some of the paid opportunities within them, but where we need to go on uh, content creation, storytelling, engagement, and just, you know, again, picking the right horses for our business, what platforms and what features within them. I, I have to shake my head currently at just even Instagram alone. If you're a user of Instagram personally or for your business, which I hope you are, um, it is, you know very well that, you know, between the newsfeed posts, the 24 hour disappearing stories that appear on the top bar to lives, um, what used to be called IGTV and is now Instagram video to reels to, uh, gosh, so many different applications for this platform. It's like its own little like multi-platform platform in itself. So what I'm trying to say is that there's so many places for us to play and to focus today. And we all know we can't be everywhere. So the goal of today is to give you the lay of the land and then start to identify where you are going to focus based on where your people are. It's all about, as we've talked about for the last five workshops, shops where is your audience's attention and the people that are going to buy from you and become your biggest fans um, and become your repeat customers and your referral network uh, where are they spending their time and then how do we go there and how do we show up so we're going to really focus on facebook instagram linkedin and twitter today we're going to also talk about pinterest snapchat a side of tiktok um, and some other opportunities but let's start off with the biggest beast of all. Okay. I have a challenge. Sorry, Kelly? Oh, sorry. Yes. Um, uh, two uh, comments. Um, the first one is if you can just explain what pay to play is, even if you sure. don't go into details. Um, Absolutely. Yes, there is a slide deck and workbook, and you need to go to um, businesslink.ca slash DEP dash webinars. I'll put it in the chat box again. And if you, Kelly, want to take a look under the um, answered in yeah. question and answer, it's just a question about um, um, uploading ID and how necessary Facebook is. So if you could cover that as well, that would be awesome. absolutely okay. So um, and that question I can see is about um, yeah something very specific. I'm not going to go into that just yet. Let's save that for the Q and A at the end. Um, and any other questions, we will absolutely get to them. I promised you last time when I talked for too long. And, uh, and as Rebecca said, this is being both recorded and the slides are available for you after the fact so that you don't have to frantically take notes. 
Um, and the workbook we always talk about at the end, we'll cover some workbook exercises, which are designed to get you off and running. So really kind of applying what we're talking about today so that you can activate your learns and not just be talked at. Okay. So uh, one thing that I like to ask a room full of people, if there is such a thing anymore is just by a show of hands, how many of you are on Facebook? And from a personal standpoint, how many of you have checked it this week? And usually nine out of 10. How many people have checked it today? Five out of 10. How many people checked it in the last hour? Two or three people. And I say this because so many of us are convinced that nobody's on Facebook anymore. And I'm telling you, with you know 2.7, I believe, uh, billion monthly active users currently on this platform, it's a monster. It's growing by the minute. The features are added continuously. And, and Facebook and Zuckerberg's empire and Meta, as it's now called, who also owns Messenger and also owns Instagram are gigantic. Apologies, I didn't mention what pay to play is. That's where we're paying or advertising to get our content seen. So anytime you see an ad on social media or a promoted post, there is some ad budget behind it to ensure it gets seen. We'll go deep into that in our social selling workshop. So please don't underestimate how much your clients might be on or your prospects might be on Facebook just because you aren't. It is still a very pl powerful platform and they are the world's number one um, uh, social media network for a reason. Constantly iterating, constantly adding more engaging features to get their users to stick around, to come back often and to get their advertisers spending money. And it's why they are a billion dollar entity, billion, multi-billion dollar entity now. So it's fantastic for a variety of reasons, the size and scope of the audience being number one, but also for the content opportunities it's given us as business owners and marketers. We are able to create fantastic, varied storytelling types. And remember, that's the point. When we go on social media as users, we are there to be entertained, to connect with friends and family, to escape our inbox and our work life. So when we show up there as businesses who are for the most part uninvited, because I didn't go on Facebook to see Ford Motor ads, I want to see my friends and family, but advertisers get to show up because that's the way it works. That's the price I pay as a user. I have to see ads one in every five to 10 posts. So as an advertiser, I better be showing up with the right tone and voice and content that's there to inspire, entertain, engage provide some kind of value rather than annoy, or I'm going to block you. I'm going to unfollow you. I'm going to report you <laughs> in the same way I would if I was subscribing to your e-newsletter and it didn't do those things for me. So we really need to, to flip our heads around thinking, okay, how can I create value add content, not advertising and promotional copy? So Facebook groups are the first feature we're going to talk about. And I'm going to fly through these relatively speedily here because there's a lot of them on a number of platforms. You know groups, you're a part of them. They're powerful because they're more private. Sometimes they're closed groups. And sometimes they just filter the conversation a little bit more and people find their people in groups better than they do in their news feed. And it's really impressive when a company starts a group, sometimes altruistically, they just wanna start a, you know, I sell fishing gear, but I'm going to spearhead and, and basically host a group full of fishing guides that are going to be talking about, you know, their insights on all sorts of gear and, you know, landscape, whatever they talk about. Terrible example, Kelly. Um, and I'm going to now be hosting that conversation and then, you know, basically um, uh, fostering community as I go, even if it's not a direct selling tool, it sure is helpful. So, you know, you're all part of multiple groups as am I. Some are brand-based groups, some are uh, totally community neighborhood-based groups, but don't underestimate the power of them and the opportunity for you to potentially host one and invite all sorts of people to it or hopefully attract them to it naturally. Um, Instapod is a massive example of a company whose page has less members than their actual um, Facebook group. So we can go on their page. I don't have a shot of it here, but there's, I think, 1.8 million followers of their or fans of their page. And yet their community or their group is gigantic. It's growing all the time. I show you two screenshots here from just a year apart where they have almost 3 million fans of people that want to talk about Instapot recipes who actually know how to cook. 
unlike myself. Um, instant messaging is the next feature. So we're able to utilize Messenger, which is, remember, a totally separate app. I can look at my phone and have my Facebook app, but I can also have my Messenger app and I maybe don't even have Facebook, but I've got Messenger. It's its own platform. But because they're own, both owned by Meta, we can utilize messaging really well in our Facebook page. So it's kind of this like hybrid uh, tool that Facebook's now hijacked from Messenger, which it bought. But either way, it allows instant connections. We are even able to set up all sorts of things that are along the lines of instant uh, replies, of frequently asked questions, and even the ability to set up auto like bot style messenger uh, on your page. And you've seen them before. Um, you go to Sunshine Village Ski Hills Facebook page and in the bottom I can message them. Send a message is what one of their little boxes is. They're call to action boxes. And when I go on there, it's got some automatic FAQs. Hi, how can we help you? And I say, what are your hours? And they have their messenger program to say, we're open Monday, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. 4 p.m. So we're able to program some of our messaging and don't be fooled, my friends, that right there is AI. You're using AI if you're using any kind of auto reply in your instant messaging. And I promise you, it's quite easy to set up inside of Facebook. Newsfeed and posts, the most obvious starter place and the place we're all very familiar with. And the key here, as we've talked about in our what should I post workshops of the past, variation, you know, intrigue, education, inspiration, uh, entertainment, all of those, those ideas and that strategy that goes into our post and Facebook makes it easy. In okay, case- I'll interrupt you. Sure, yeah. Um, so posting, you can do in groups and on pages. And we have a question from Frankie. Is okay. a Facebook group more effective than a Facebook business page? And I know what I would say, but what do you say? I'm going to say no. A group is powerful. It's a side feature. You need to have a business page. This is where people can find you. And Facebook has, if you recall, about five years ago, uh, maybe seven years ago now, the, we were all using our personal profiles. And then we started building pages or personal profiles that were representing our business. And Facebook said, no, no, no. We need to solidify this as a business tool. So please turn this personal profile, it would say, this looks like a business to, uh, page, turn it into an actual business page. And then we all went, wait a minute, if I do that, you're going to make me pay to meet or speak with my fans or reach them. And you're going to, you know, my organic reach is going to go down. And yes, it did. But the, the flip side of that, the, the glass half full version of that is that they also gave us incredible business tools on those business pages, like the ones that I'm showing you. You don't have... Um, you know, auto replies and inbox and advertising tools and content targeting uh, on a personal page as you do in a business page environment. So I really encourage you to have a business page and it's very easy to set up. You go through all the, the steps on business manager uh, setup and, or business page setup. And um, before you know it, you've got a nice looking business tool. Yeah. And with groups, it works really well for Instant Pot, but they have the resources to keep it going. It takes a lot of time and effort, even if it's it's still free, but to moderate and make sure that you're not getting spammed, to make sure that you're letting the right people into your group. It, yeah. It's it's very difficult. Business Link has an Indigenous services group for Indigenous business people in Alberta. That works really well. It's really created a community for the specific group of people who are facing the specific sort of barriers to entry business link for most of the rest of us you'll be familiar with our facebook page and that's all we need to communicate with you and really all you need to communicate with us when it comes to facebook I'll exactly let you continue okay thank you um great points rebecca so plenty of post options. I won't go deep into this here, but the point is the variety that's available to us. You've heard me say often, you want your news feed, just like your e-newsletter or your Instagram page to read like a bit of a magazine, your favorite print magazine. That's not just feature articles, feature articles, feature articles. That would be like a medical journal. We want to see photos and maybe a GIF or maybe a meme or a video or a link or just text, but mixing it up is what they're allowing us to do here on top of 
things like tagging our products and using Instagram shop, creating photo albums, creating slideshows, et cetera. We're not doing demos of those things because again, we're just doing feature overview here, but don't underestimate the variety and interest you can create in your newsfeed with a little bit of strategy and pre-planning. And because we're all brilliant social media marketers, we understand the importance of strategizing in advance, creating that variety content, maybe 20 posts a month, not 200, and scheduling them in advance. Because now it's not knee-jerk salesy content when I'm standing on the trade show floor or when I realize I have 3,000 t-shirts to sell by the end of the month and I'm doing push, 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 annoying sales marketing. Instead, I'm, I'm a strategic storyteller. I'm a brand journalist and I have the tools at my disposal to help me do this. Uh, content, or sorry, Creator Studio is Facebook's scheduling tool. So if you don't want to use a third-party scheduling tool, like say Hootsuite, or my personal favorite is actually called Content Studio, you have a built-in tool that's free inside of Facebook Business Suite, where you manage your page and your audiences and your content scheduling. And it's called Creator Studio, and it's fantastic. It's come a long way. You have the ability to schedule drafts or create drafts, schedule posts, collaborate with your team, pre-boost your content, which we'll get into in our social selling workshop, and then other tools like Live Producer if you want to go live and you've just got the ability to tee it up a little bit more, et cetera. So plenty of scheduling and publishing tools um, that I think we need to explore a little bit more, some of us, because as we know, Scheduled content makes it happen. Live content keeps it real. We can step into the party and into the conversation with our engagement that's live or with maybe the odd Instagram story or Facebook live, but our scheduled content keeps us on track and it's so important. And if you can do that for a few hours a month and then wait till the next month and do it again, it's not constantly this monkey on your back. So scheduling is so, so important. I can't say enough about the tools inside of what's called Facebook Business Suite. I already mentioned it. It used to be called Facebook Business Manager. This isn't a business manager class. It's, it's a pretty robust platform that you're gonna have to get familiar with. Um, but I did mention it a couple weeks ago in our, uh, in our marketing mix workshop. And you don't have to use it, but essentially if you have a Facebook business page and you want to manage it really seamlessly with the scheduling tool I just mentioned and some other inbox tools and advertising tools, I encourage you to go to business.facebook.com. And that's where you can bring everything inside of Business Suite and have some of these tools better available to you. I hope that doesn't totally overwhelm you all. Does Creator Studio post to Instagram as well? Yes, Alana, it does. So there's two tabs. If you look at the top, we're on the left side. There's an Instagram little tab and there's a Facebook tab. So I can, I can toggle between them both and schedule my Instagram and my Facebook. Then what I would do is I'd go inside a business suite and I, I don't have a screenshot of it here, but I can see my scheduled posts and I can easily shortcut to Creator Studio. But then I can also manage my inbox all in one place, Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, so whether that's comments, whether it's direct messages, whatever it is, I'm not in my phone trying to toggle between multiple platforms to reply to people. I hope that makes sense. Thank you for typing that in there, uh, Rebecca, if that was you or Carrie. Okay, let's keep moving, you guys. I know that's a lot. I do apologize. But um, again, I'm trying to inspire you on Facebook, not train you on every aspect of it within 17 minutes. So we have to keep moving. Within Facebook, we have events. You've been invited to them. Maybe you've created them, but they're kind of overlooked. So I encourage you to take another look at this. Um, some brands are using it really well, whether it's just an annual launch event or it's ongoing workshops and webinars. Remember that you are that, if you're that accountant, who's like, I have nothing interesting to post on social media. This isn't fair. I wish I owned a sexy flower shop. Okay, but you're now creating content that, remember, gets them to the finish line. So you're not just telling me my tax returns due. You're sending me a spreadsheet to fill out my mileage log as an entrepreneur. How annoying and lame is that? I don't want to do it. Oh, now you're scheduling a workshop to get or a webinar 
to get me and 10 of your other burnout clients to show up and actually fill out our stupid mileage log together. Now you've gotten me to the finish line. I love you. I admire, or I I appreciate you. You've created relief. Remember those emotional things we want to feel from the people we do business with that go beyond just the things that we could get from anyone. So maybe that's an event you schedule. We see a lot of LinkedIn events around this with business ideas, but, and Facebook events are often kind of more, we think of them as, you know, fluffy event events, but they could be anything inside of your business that makes sense. And you can promote them really well too. Um, And events only work if all people are on Facebook. Yes, someone would need to have a Facebook account to come to your event, just like they would to be a part of your group. So that is a good point. Doesn't work for anyone and everything. Um, But if you're running a membership or a group out of your out of Facebook as part of your business offering, I've generally found people are pretty keen to join for that reason. They don't have to have a super robust Facebook account. They just need to find that aspect that you're giving them that additional insight or value inside your Facebook group they will show up for that. Okay. You mentioned LinkedIn and we did have a question about that. Um, Is it applicable in any way to our social selling when, where would we use it? And I would say, yes, absolutely. And you would use LinkedIn if you're doing more of a business to business type service or product. Yes. We'll get to LinkedIn in a second and we'll talk about LinkedIn events, LinkedIn lives. There's a lot inside of LinkedIn um, that might be more applicable for some of you for sure. Um, okay, video inside of so stories and lives, you've seen them in, in Facebook. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you that video isn't powerful because it is. If you can find ways to do video inside your business and then utilize these platforms and the free video tools they offer us, like the live, live streaming on Instagram, live streaming on Facebook, quick little 10 second lives that I'm going to post to my Facebook stories or my Instagram stories. So powerful because now we have all the rich, you know, interactive features of you and your business and your personality. And that builds trust. It builds awareness and connection and all those things. So it's just in the same way, a podcast gives us audio and that sort of richer experience than just reading a blog post, really try and think about utilizing stories and lives within Facebook. If you can. We have so many insights from Facebook as well. Um, We do have an upcoming uh, webinar on metrics. It's number eight, workshop number eight. So I won't go deep into this, but it's so important to see what's working, to see what people are resonating with and uh, what posts are working and which ones aren't, what we can do more of, et cetera. Um, Shop. If anyone's using Facebook shop, or Instagram shop, you know how powerful this is. It's not hard to set up, but you do have to do it inside of Facebook business suite where you'll find commerce manager and you build your catalog, whether that has five pairs of earrings in it or 15 different tax return packages, you can build this and then instantly have almost like an e-commerce store there. You can connect it to a paid account or you can just use it as a shortcut to get people sooner, you know, to your Shopify link or your Etsy page or whatever. But at least now you're using that built-in tool that Facebook's giving you so you can tag your products and services in your posts on both Facebook and Instagram. So Facebook shop, really powerful. And then the posts that we're able to create with our products tagged in them is awesome. You've seen this on Instagram probably. And if not, I encourage you to troll through a feed tonight, create a dummy account if you need to. It's the best way to do R&D is to spend an hour, you know, scrolling through your news feed of brands and businesses you admire or follow and see how they're using different post types. And if ever you see the little purse icon in the top of an Instagram post or a Facebook post, you know that that's a shoppable post. And if I touch it, all the shoppable links or products in that in that photo are going to pop out and I can literally click on that piece of furniture or that pair of earrings and instantly shop. I don't even have to leave the platform. So it's like one stop, zero click or one click shopping. And you've gotten me to my, to my goal, which is to find my mother's day present or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the end of Facebook. I'm going to dive into Instagram and keep things moving. Anything you want to add, Rebecca? I struggle to find an unmute button. Uh, No, just one question. Can shop be used for a membership drive? What do you think? 
Hmm. I, I feel like that might be tricky. Yeah, I'm not really sure what you mean by that. In order, like, the shop is sort of at the end of the customer journey. Like, now I've gotten them engaged, or they're following my posts, or they subscribe to my e newsletter, they know who I am, and then they see my shoppable link and they want to buy. Right. Um, it's a little bit unconventional to use your Facebook or Instagram shop to uh, sell memberships, but you could. Um, but yeah, I think it's kind of a different application. Great. Thank you. Okay, everybody. No problem. Let's talk Instagram. So like Facebook, we know that it is absolutely gigantic and growing. Uh, two years ago, Instagram passed the 1 billion monthly active users mark. And that was a big deal because before that it was a photo sharing app is what they called it. Well, now we know that it is so much more than that. Um, it's in the news a lot for better or for worse. Uh, we're still spending a lot of our time on this platform and sharing, you know, everything from a personal and a business perspective. And it's a really good place to be. I really encourage you to be there. Even some of the most corporate entities I work with, I encourage them to consider Instagram, not because they feel like they're totally naturally inclined to be sharing photos and live stories, but because it's where the people are. And if you, I mean, most of us, uh, even let's say some of the companies I'm working with that are very B2B corporate, let's say an oil producer, uh, it's still a place to share your stories and show up where others are and to be seen. So that's the idea of pull back the curtains, let us in. Even if I'm not going to you know, be your customer, I can still go to your Instagram feed and better get to know you. And so why would we be afraid of that? If you feel like there's room in your platform, you know, in your bandwidth to show up on Instagram with some of the same types of visual content as in graphics or images that you might post to Facebook, why not put them on Instagram? It's where so many people are alongside or instead of Facebook. So um, it's great for visual content. It's awesome for video content because of its built-in video editor, as in Instagram Reels, 60 or 30 second videos, which it gives us a little video editing app right within it, um, as well as our lives. Instagram Live, I'm showing up, cost me nothing, and holy smokes, I actually have my own video channel now that I can, you know, get my message out with. Uh, and then, of course, Instagram Stories are 24 hour disappearing stories that can be text-based, photo-based, or video. Hey guys, I'm just walking into my business today. We're unveiling our newest 2022 collection of blah, blah, blah. Why not? We all watch stories. Well, those of us on Instagram do. Um, so let's talk about the features of Instagram. The bio, it's short and sweet. You get one link, so use it well. I've mentioned this to some of you before. We get that link and a lot of us will use something called Linktree or another, um, another page or, or link service where we can write in a few different um, links that we wanna send people to. If you wanna do that, that's great. What I really encourage you to do is create a, a website page for this. I'm sorry to send you to my website, but the best example I can give you is one where I'm not paying to use Linktree or another link service like that. Um, because for example, I'm posting posts and I say, um, hey, come out and check out. We're going to be at this market this weekend. Link in bio. Because in your Facebook, Instagram posts, you're not allowed to include URLs. So instead of you know, writing out the URL, I create the hot link and I put it in my bio. Well, next week when I post another link on a photo and I say link in bio, that old one disappears. And if someone stumbles on that image, they can't find that link in bio. So that's why we use a link tree or other such service. But what I really encourage you to do that's totally free is create a page like we've created social school forward slash rocket fuel, which is my way of saying, come on in. And here's all the ways to get started with our school. And then there's all sorts of links for people to follow. And now they're on our website. That is So just something for you to consider. That is awesome. That is great advice, Kelly, because the SEO value of that is, is huge. That's true. They can find your, your website on Instagram rather than whatever slash totally yeah and then the back links like uh, internal links from having it on your own page this is Absolutely. this is great thank you i agree <laughs> it's surprising that more people don't do it, it and never in the spirit of like 
<laughs> yeah. And me neither until just recently. And in the spirit of cutting down our subscriptions too, like don't go, you know, pay for another service that's going to help you just create short links in your, <laughs> thanks, Matt, create short links in your Instagram page. Okay. Sorry to get hung up on that bio. Once again, do some R and D, which can sometimes be rip off and duplication and see what other people are doing in their bios. There's a lot of emojis being used. You only get one short paragraph. And remember, we're making it about them, not you. Make it about me, your user, fan, or follower to see, you know, help you build your dream business. Um, grow, help you grow online. Use those words instead of telling us how great you are if you can. Your feed. AKA your other website, it's your social search results. I think a lot of us can agree that if someone tells you about that cool new coffee shop down the street, yeah, I can go to their website, but it's, it's like a business card. It's pretty static and it's pretty corporate. And I want to know what you've done for me lately. I'm going to go to your Instagram feed to see if I actually like you or what are you about? Or I want to see inside that restaurant before I book with my friend. So utilizing or knowing that and just kind of taking it into account that this is where people go to get to know you and no pressure. You don't have to conquer the world with this, but it is what we do as modern day humans and consumers. We go to social to get to know who people really are and what they're about. And that includes yeah. their staff their voice, their values, their captions, their responses in to people in the cap, in the comments. Yeah. And I, I need to interject again. There was a comment in the chat, like, if you don't want to show your face, how do you tell a story? But if you take a look at these two screenshots here, there are stories being told without you going, Hey, my name's Rebecca and I work at business link and I want to help you succeed. Um, they're showing stories about the kind of lifestyle you can have with the product or service. Yeah. And, you know, you can use stock images. There are a few free Absolutely. sites you can use. Totally. Um, yeah. And yeah, we will be sharing out the recording. Thank you for pasting that back in. And um, I just thought, since I'm already talking, I have a really quick question from the uh, q and I changed my account on Instagram back to a personal account due to the shift in organic reach. How do you get over this hang up if you don't have a significant Instagram marketing budget? Um, changed it to a business account. I uh, had a business account, changed it back to personal because the organic reach is better. Oh, yeah. Is it true that they are going to be changing back to a chronological timeline? Oh, yes. That is that is the word, that there will be less in, in algorithmic involvement in what we see in our newsfeed um, so that there's, I, I think it'll be a blend. Everybody was getting used to the idea that it was no longer a chronological timeline, like Twitter. If you go on Twitter, you see the latest posts and you scroll to the top again and you see the latest posts and everybody's invited. There's, there's no algorithmic filtering filtering. If I follow you, I'm going to see your posts. But the problem with that is it's a fire hose. I can't keep up. Even if I only follow 2000, 200 accounts, I'm still going to see so much content. So on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube, we get algorithmic filtering based on what they think we want to see plus a whole lot of ads or promoted content. But what happened was that the content that was doing well based on the algorithm would stay at the top of your feed for a while. So you'd see someone's post for a week sometimes or four days, or you'd see an older post show up again. And uh, Instagram is saying, okay, we're going to go back to being more chronological, but it won't be entirely that way. It'll still be a blend because it's in there. They just can't not filter content. There's too much of it. And I would say, don't worry too much um, about if you're worried about becoming a business page or staying with a personal page in Instagram, Personally, I would encourage you to become a business page because of the features that you have access to. And because if you want to advertise it all or boost your content, you have to. But um, yeah. I also have found it to be a bit of a, a myth that my personal business account, if I had a personal profile account, but I was posting business content, that it gets so much better reach than a business account would with that same content. I just haven't experienced that. So I wouldn't worry too much about this massive drop in reach. If you have experienced it, that could be coinciding with the fact that the algorithm is just way harder these days. I can't create an Instagram account and go viral tomorrow or have 100,000 fans next week because there's so many of us on the platform now. That just doesn't happen very often anymore. I love that Carrie just said, Carrie Heritage Roasting Co. does an amazing job of storytelling. They really do. 
Okay, you guys, I don't want to not get to end Q&A here. So I'm going to keep rolling at the risk of annoying and overwhelming you all. Stories. You know stories. I encourage you to watch them. They're the best way to create the kind of content that allows us to get to know you better. Likewise, lives. Um, you know, follow celebrities, but also follow brands doing lives and you'll see what I mean. There's demos, there's behind the scenes, there's Q and A's, did you knows, testimonials, um, really exciting, ask me anything. So once again, if I'm planning my content in advance, I'm committing to four lives per month or one live per month. I know that I'm going to have a guest speaker and I'm going to arrange it in advance. We're going to split screen our live like Katie Couric does all the time when she interviews people or I'm going to do a behind the scenes and walk through and talk to my staff. So I'm not on, on the camera, just my voices. There's so many ways we can do lives. We can tee them up in advance and get people to come to tune in live, but also they're gonna show up for the replay because I'm gonna post that live to my Instagram feed or to my, my um, one of my posts so that my replay traffic will be just as great or greater than my live traffic. IGTV used to be video that wasn't live. They now just simply called it video. So if I post a video to my Instagram account, it's in my Instagram videos. But again, this is awesome because I have my very own video channel. I don't need to hope that CTV morning show is going to pick up my story and put me on the air. I can actually garner way more views on whatever video content I create if I do it properly. And then I spread the word about it. Reels we mentioned, it's just Instagram's darling feature. It's only still two years old, maybe two and a half, um, but they're still giving it a lot of prominence. So if I create several reels per week, which is their recommend, but let's say I do one reel per week. And again, see that little white icon in that pink graphic? That means it's a reel. Cruise through your store or your newsfeed and look for reels or go right into the discovery tab and search reels. And you'll see brands creating fantastic reels. And I promise you'll get some ideas. They're not that difficult. They don't have to be dancing TikTok videos. They can be anything that's visual and moving. The quick replies, this is what I was mentioning earlier in Facebook. So in the same way we can create auto replies in our Facebook page, we can have quick replies in Instagram. Also set up inside of Instagram or Facebook business suite in the messaging section and really awesome because now all those DMs coming in asking me the same dang question, get an instant reply. Um, and then many others too that I can of course customize. Reels are stories, but they're longer and they have more, you can add music, you can add stickers, you can add links, you can add all sorts of stuff. It is the best video editing tool on the internet. If you've ever tried to edit a video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but inside of Reels, you add a clip, put some text on it, add another clip, put some text on it, do it again, and then they splice it together in a really cute 60 second video. And you've got your story of the month or your, your reel of the day or the month or whatever. Okay, guys, I'm moving through. We're heading into Twitter. <laughs> this is a fire hose. I, I shouldn't, I, this is, I should just call this Twitter. So um, it's the place to go. We know that there are a lot of users. It's the ninth most used social platform in the world. So yes, that's not top three, but it is, wait for it, the place to go to discover what's happening. If following the trucker convoy, like I couldn't get an, I couldn't peel myself away yesterday. And did I go on main, mainstream media? No, I couldn't find anything. So I just went on Twitter. I searched the hashtag trucker convoy 2022 and I couldn't peel myself away. So again, don't underestimate Twitter. I took a six year hiatus from Twitter. I used to use it as a journalist in 2009 through 12. And then I was like, ugh. well now I'm rediscovering it and not just because of the convoy. The last few years I'm like, holy smokes. Did Donald Trump make this relevant again? Well, maybe, but we can't ignore the fact that it's referenced so often in the media and so many people break their news there. So as a business, is it a good place to show up? Yeah. Is it hard? No, you don't have to have the graphics and the videos. You can just show up with text-based tweets. You can retweet industry news. You can create lists and easily follow what's happening in your industry and then step into the conversation very quickly. 
so that you, you know, it's, it's that elephant in the room. If I work for a, a company in clean tech and I'm not talking about the latest climate change report, shame on me. It looks like I'm not part of that conversation, but simply through retweeting and quoting and just putting my own two cents on a story on Twitter, I can do this. And of course, gaining that trust, getting localized followers and conversation going and being part of maybe just my local, um, you know, civic news or conversation or my industry news. Cause now I'm part of that craft brewer uh, conversation and we're, I'm seeing what's happening. So I encourage you to, um, you know, check it out if you think that that's worthwhile for you. The amount of collaboration that goes on on Twitter in between industries is really unique too. And on a business side or a small business side, my work with the Inglewood Business Revitalization Zone, uh, sorry, the business improvement area now over the years, I worked with Inglewood for nine years. And uh, we started their Facebook and Twitter accounts back in 2010. And um, it was really neat to see how businesses would actually tell us, I set up shop in Inglewood because of the social community here and the collaboration amongst local businesses. It was amazing. It was just this other kind of benefit that started to happen. And, and uh, yeah, again, collaboration. We could talk about it for a long time. Brevity, if that's your thing, this is your platform. And again, short, sweet little sound bites that you, you don't have to sit and strategize for months. You can just show up daily and retweet something in your industry or weigh in on something that's newsworthy and controversial or contrarian or important. And now you're part of the conversation. I love that magazines, for example, or news outlets, they will take their feature image, their cover story, their blog post of the month, and they'll, you know, paste it to their account. They'll rebrand or kind of wash their feeds in that cover story or that feature image, uh, feature uh, interview, for example, for the month or for the week. So really fun. That's multi-platform storytelling. You've heard me say that when it comes to traditional media, TV, billboards, print, we totally understand what a campaign is. If I asked you, have you seen the latest Ikea campaign? You'd be like, oh yeah, I saw the commercial, I saw the billboard and I heard it on the radio. Okay, well, what about an online campaign? Most of us are like, huh? <laughs> well, same thing. Why wouldn't I announce my latest blah, 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 my, my you know, uh, what's that February holiday? Valentine's Day um, uh, campaign or initiative or sale or whatever across multiple platforms at one time or drip it out across a few, make it fun. But this just is a little bit of strategy that many of us aren't implementing. I'm not gonna go into the example of Wendy's, but great Twitter account, super cheeky. They have made fast food fun. I talked about them a little bit last time as well, but let's go into LinkedIn. Is that all right? Are you guys keeping up? You're gonna hate me after today. God, I swore that this wouldn't be such a fire hose and it is. Thank you for sticking around. Okay, LinkedIn is an absolutely untapped opportunity for business pages. What we're failing to realize with LinkedIn is that it is not just a place to post your resume or have a job search or you know deep creep somebody in their past work. It, it has a huge amount of users, especially in North America. And it's not just about you know working professionals. This is about a massive amount of people that are turning to LinkedIn for their news and for their articles and for their uh, industry communications or collaboration. And so many of us set up a LinkedIn page, maybe um, if we've even gotten past our personal profile updates with where we went to school, we've set up a LinkedIn business page and just left it. When in fact, the reality is that there are so few content creators on LinkedIn so I'm talking about the people creating content that lands in your LinkedIn newsfeed, just like your Facebook feed, that there is an enormous amount of organic reach. And if you ever go on LinkedIn and you do cruise your newsfeed, you know what I'm talking about, that it's almost the same people that you see all the time creating content. And that's because there just isn't that many compared to Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube or YouTube and Twitter, where we're all creating a lot of content. So there's a tiny fraction of content creators compared to those other accounts. And this is where you have a big opportunity for reach of both your personal posts 
and your business posts. And if done well, you're sharing them around between the two and you post something on your business page, you share it on your personal page and holy smokes, the engagement and the reach is very high. So I'm a hairstylist. Why would I be on LinkedIn? Well, because there's 600 million active people that are on there and a lot of them have hair. So don't assume you have to be super corporate, white collar, whatever to be on LinkedIn. It is absolutely a incredible platform and it's owned by Microsoft. It's their darling platform because they don't own any others and the features that they're constantly adding to it are incredible. LinkedIn groups are fantastic. If you're not a part of a LinkedIn group, I encourage you to go join a couple and see what the conversation's like and don't just step into them to farm for leads or promote your, your stuff because people hate that. And likewise, with your LinkedIn messaging in your inbox, stop spent sending spammy messages, show up and engage, be a voice of authority and personality and trust in and accessibility in your industry or for your company and show up in the newsfeed, share valuable insights and information, stats, studies, you know, your take on something and you'll see how it works. But I think so many of us are using LinkedIn wrong articles on LinkedIn. If you're writing blog posts or you're thinking about blog posts, and remember, I'm not talking 5,000 word articles. I'm talking three or four paragraphs that are too long for a Facebook post. Turn it into an article. Spend some time on LinkedIn and check out articles. You'll go to an Arianna Huffington or a Bill Gates or a Apple and go on their page and then you'll see their posts and their articles. And I encourage you to look at how beautiful the articles are. It's this publishing tool that you can add images to and links and quotes and headlines. And suddenly you've got this really beautiful spot to post your, your blogs essentially and share them far and wide. Business.linkedin.com is the business management platform or the dashboard for which we can manage our business page as well as our ads on LinkedIn if we want. This is far less important than business.facebook.com where you'll find Facebook Business Suite, but it is, it is uh, helpful if you're doing any kind of advertising or what they call sponsored content on LinkedIn. If you need to see what a sponsored post looks like, scroll your feed and you'll see some posts that say sponsored and they are the ones that have a bit of money behind them, just like a boosted or promoted post on Facebook or Instagram that ensures it gets seen uh, to fans and non-fans or followers alike. We're on the home stretch, you guys. I have one little thing to say about four, no, five additional platforms. Google My Business, so important. If you have not set up your Google My Business account, please do. It is, uh, this one is a set it and forget it. Unless you wanna add regular status updates, which you totally can once a week or whatever, they're awesome. They look just like Facebook posts. Go to, just even if you have to, Google, Google my business. And it'll say you have or have not yet set up your page and then start to add the integral info, um, you know, address, hours, products, services, uh, you'll see the reviews in there, respond to any that you haven't responded to, good and bad, and just find, uh, well, get it set up properly, and then you'll find that your local SEO skyrockets. Now I'm available in, in I'm showing up in Google Maps. Now I'm showing up with a rich snippet on the sidebar in Google search. Now I'm showing up when someone's driving through my town looking for an Italian restaurant because I've properly optimized my Google My Business page. So literally, GMB is local SEO covered. The rest is big global SEO that you know we could talk about in all different ways, but this is your starting point. And if you don't have a physical address, would you still set up your Google My Business? Yes, yes, absolutely. You don't have to have a physical address or show up on maps, but it will do the other things for you. Um, I encourage you to Google a few things. Google your favorite dog, your pet store, Google Lululemon, go into some like incognito windows and Google a few businesses and you'll see on the right sidebar of your search results in desktop, whatever shows up on the right, that rich maps, reviews, posts, um, hours, that's pulling right from Google My Business. And if you don't have that showing up for your business, you haven't set up that page yet. It's as easy as that. So grab hold of that thing and set it up right. It's a social platform as well in that you can add status updates to it, as I mentioned. Um, a good one is Chuck's Steakhouse 
or even social school. If you need an example, Google social school and you'll see, uh, I haven't updated it for a little bit, but you'll see at the very bottom, not only will you see our Google My Business shop where you'll see our products and services, but you'll see at the bottom a few status updates, which look like Facebook posts. And again, it's just instant idea of what this business is about that Google has packaged up for us. YouTube. If you have a video strategy, you're doing YouTube, good for you. It's enormous. We don't have time to go into YouTube extensively, except to say that it is a massive traffic driver. YouTube and Pinterest have long been known as incredible search engines. They are number two and number three next to Google and, and Bing as like the actual big time search or uh, search engines. These guys drive so much traffic. So if you can show up on Pinterest and YouTube and drive traffic as a result of your fantastic video content or image content that's got your links and it's got your keywords in each post, you're gonna drive people to your website from there, which is the idea. TikTok and Snapchat are the last two things. This is where you need to ask yourself, are my people there? And don't just assume. You need to ask your customers if they're on TikTok or your prospects. Not just, you know, your wife who's like, no. Um, <laughs> uh, and if you feel like you need some inspiration or understanding as to what businesses are successfully doing on TikTok, either go on there or Google successful TikTok business accounts 2021. And you'll see a roundup of articles that'll show you like what United Airlines did or what Chatelaine Magazine is doing or what other business accounts have done with content on TikTok and whether it's working or not, that might be a starting point for you because TikTok and Snapchat, again, it's, it's their own little beast. I'm not on them for good, for my own reasons, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be. And, uh, and don't let anyone tell you that they're not worth their time because they have multi, multi millions, if not billions of followers. And you know what, TikTok makes me feel old too. But there, if you get on the right side of TikTok free, you can find elder millennial and Gen X people <laughs> on there also talking about how they're on the platform and feeling old. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And if nothing else, it's entertaining. And that's the idea. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave this here. So three exercises for you as I'm going to answer some questions. I know we only have a few minutes left. But um, the idea is that a bit of a social audit is a good starting point, everyone. So, you know, what are your priorities? How strongly do you feel like you're currently showing up? And as I've said before, if your starting point is like better messaging and a website you're proud of, go there. But if you're like, okay, I've got to start reaching people on social better, you know, is it LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook? Wonderful. Let's focus on those. You can have some secondary platforms, but I encourage you to come up with three and commit to them if you can. Um, and this comes from auditing your past posts and just taking a hard look at what's working and what's not, or what you could be doing better, asking people if you need for feedback, and then making a plan. So, you know, who are your followers and where are they? And then what kind of content do they want to see from you? A few other questions that you can ask yourself about, you know, your industry or your competitors, or even just people that are doing content really well that you gravitate towards. We always say, would you read that post? Or as my news editor used to say to me, would you read that article? And I'd be like, no, no, that's really boring. So why do I think that strangers are going to open that or stop on that post or share it or like it or comment? So what are others doing really well? What resonates with you or again, your customers? Um, that you know you could do uh, yourself or do a better job of. So just some leading questions for you there. And then that last uh, exercise is to start to nail down these, you know, nine and 10 priorities. So on a scale of one to 10, what do you know are the most important marketing tactics and social platforms for you to focus on? And this is a question that builds on our workshop from two weeks ago, the marketing mix, where we talked about everything email marketing, podcasting, you know, social media is just one tactic really, but maybe it is your, your 10 out of 10 most important place to go in 2022. Any pressing okay. questions there, Rebecca, that I can answer or anyone have any, there any, are, uh, I'm not sure if we can answer the ones that are still waiting in the queue, but I, I want to answer for everybody a question that we did get about how to find demographics and there's there's two big ways one is 
just Google social media demographics 2022, and you'll find reports from reputable websites. Sprout Social is the first one that pulled up here. HubSpot will have one. I love the Pew Re uh, Research Center from the United States. Um, and then you can also contact Business Link, and we can do some more in depth market research for you uh, in that way. Yeah. Uh, is it appropriate to link your social platform to others' platforms or links to others? Yes, yes, definitely share, share other people. If someone shares something that is that you like and is applicable to your audience, do it. Um, the only thing is if they, do they share your values? I think would be the big thing for me, right? Um, especially when things come up that are very divisive and yeah. in election times, my recommendation is stay away from that kind of thing right um or you're, you you might gain some followers and you might lose a bunch too depending on your political leaning so always keep that value uh in sight mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> absolutely it takes a bit of homework too it's true yeah. like twitter will now even say are you sure you want to share that or facebook yeah. they're trying to have filters or at least like little roadblocks in place before you brazenly share an article i've been recently told you didn't actually read that article are you sure you want to share it i'm like yes i read it somewhere else i swear share so yeah just trying to be aware of that that's a really good point um uh, so we just want to clarify what a DEP, that's the digital economy program where you can access Google shop here, shop here powered by Google or a digital service squad. And these webinars are part of the offerings of that program as well. Uh, DSS is the digital service squad. And there are, there are so many questions popping up. Um, let's answer this last one because we are over time. Kelly. What is a quick overview tactic that you would deploy to educate senior management who have no idea about social media? How do you convince them that you need it? Oh, well, you know, I will say that one of the things I find encouraging today is that I'm being asked a lot less, um, do I need to be on social media? Do we need to be on social at all? What a joke, blah, 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 than three or four years ago. Um, but I, for those that are still needing to be convinced, I think it starts with a strong argument around, um, you know, what is it that our competitors are doing? What is it that the industry is requiring? And are we properly telling our story? I mean, there's so many articles that you could read on this if you need some backup to just along the lines of even the most buttoned up corporate organizations. Again, I love to use the oil and gas industry as my scapegoat here because they are classically known as the industry that that like stayed so quiet and sat on their high horse for a long time so that now when they try to get ahead of the story or to, or own their story about green energy, clean tech, lower emissions, people are like, whatever, we don't even believe you because we told your story for you when you were too busy being quiet about it. So, you know, I don't know. I just, I have, I have a hard time truthfully locating businesses anymore that aren't aware of the damage that can be done if they don't actually go ahead and, you know, start getting online and, and actively telling stories. But then there's also really great examples of businesses like I'll say Russ Gerling, CEO of Trans Canada or TC Energy. We worked at TC for a while, convinced their communications departments that they needed to put their CEO on the internet. And let's hear from him about who he is as a person beyond just his earnings reports. And now he's really into it. I just got an, a message from a, a VP in their communications department a couple of weeks ago that he can't get enough of it. And he really wants to be do an interview on this or have this guy on or, you know, so um, I think that once we go there, we can see just what kind of results and truth we can tell. And you've got to be able to find that argument within your business or your industry with case studies and positive examples, I think. Um, yeah, there's negative pushback too, and people are always going to be naysayers, but if you, I mean, your choice is to either do nothing and hide and let them have that dialogue anyway, or be a part of it, own it, correct it, and set it straight. Um, yeah, I was trying to show you the back end of Google My Business here. Um, I'll just show you if I was to Google My Business, uh, oopsie, whatever it's called, um, where that rich snippet uh, or that that additional Google My Business uh, information shows up on the right. 
So somebody had asked, how do I get on Google Maps? Well, through Google My Business. If you input your address um, and you properly set up the rest, you're one step closer. I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Kelly. And I will try and grab the chat. If it exports correctly, I will add that to businesslink.ca slash DEP dash webinars. Uh, join us. Do not miss next week email marketing. It is, I don't, would you say it's number one, Kelly? For, for us, it is number one with uh, conversions. Yeah, conversions and sales. For me, it's number one. Uh, engagement and rent and awareness building, social media. But yeah, email marketing is underrated for a lot of us. And we're not using it beyond the odd e-newsletter. We're going to talk about three types of campaigns, nurture campaigns, lead generation campaigns, and fulfillment campaigns. And it's not overly complicated. It's again, it's strategic. So we'd love to see you there. Great. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. Thank you, Kelly, for sharing. I am so sorry we couldn't answer every single question. Keep on coming and sign up for a Digital Service Squad member. They can help you out. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye.